Diddy woke up this morning inside the Metropolitan Detention Center in Brooklyn. The federal jail has been called, quote, hell on earth. He can't go into a regular housing unit because somebody will take him out for sure. Diddy's attorney revealing the worst thing about jail for the rapper. According to People Magazine, his lawyer said, quote, I think the food's probably the roughest part of it. I would expect that he would not be in the general population. His incredibly high celebrity status makes him a very, very attractive target for assault. Diddy Combs, the hip-hop mogul, renowned for his extravagant lifestyle and influence, woke up this morning not in the opulent surroundings of his $48 million Miami mansion, but in the stark confines of the Metropolitan Detention Center in Brooklyn. This federal facility, often described as hell on earth, paints a grim picture of life behind bars. Gone are the days of luxury. Now, he's unable even to step into a general housing unit where violence lurks around every corner. His attorney recently shed light on a particularly harsh reality, the food. As reported by People magazine, he lamented, I think the food's probably the roughest part of it a telling indication of the grim conditions awaiting inmates in this notorious institution. Facing serious charges of sex trafficking and racketeering, Diddy finds himself in a place where his celebrity status transforms him into a prime target for assault. This facility has seen its share of high-profile inmates, like Ghislaine Maxwell and R. Kelly, but the MDC is infamous for its brutality. Diddy is now living under constant surveillance, stripped of the power and privileges that once defined him. The reality he faces is far removed from the glamorous life he led. Speak after a judge denied his request for bail a second time, and the place where he's locked up now getting a lot of attention. The Metropolitan Detention Center, the only federal jail in New York City, is known for violence, poor conditions, and a string of celebrity detainees. And Diddy's attorneys want him out. NBC News' is, uh, Yasmin Yusian has more. From his $48 million Miami mansion to hell on earth where chaos reigns. Just some of the words used to describe the Metropolitan Detention Center where Sean Diddy Combs is now being held without bail after pleading not guilty to sex trafficking and racketeering charges. Combs abused, threatened, and coerced victims to fulfill his sexual desires, protect his reputation, and conceal his conduct. This is raw and unforgiving. His journey to this bleak existence has been tumultuous. Just recently, a judge denied his bail request for the second time, leaving him trapped in a chaotic environment known for its violence and squalor. With around 1,200 detainees, the atmosphere is tense, and inmates have been known to fashion makeshift weapons and hide contraband. One chilling incident last April involved a group of alleged MS-13 gang members stabbing another inmate 44 times in a brutal attack caught on camera. Though that the victim survived, it paints a disturbing picture of life inside the MDC. On top of the threat of violence, allegations of medical neglect and staffing shortages are rampant. Reports reveal that at least six staff members have faced charges for facilitating drug smuggling, with some accused of accepting bribes to bring contraband into the facility. I've had clients describe MDC as hell, said Lance Clark, a federal defense attorney with a track record of representing clients there. It's the worst conditions they've been in. He emphasized the government's responsibility to ensure inmate safety, a promise that has come under scrutiny as conditions worsen. Diddy's current living situation is particularly precarious, he is confined to his cell for 23 hours a day, allowed just three showers a week. The advice he's received to survive this culture shock is simple yet stark. Keep quiet. Keep to yourself. The Federal Bureau of Prisons has formed an urgent action team to address ongoing issues within the facility, emphasizing their mission to maintain humane conditions. Yet, the conflicting realities suggest that Diddy's celebrity status may not protect him from the harsh truths of prison life. It might even amplify them. The transition from a life of luxury to one of isolation and fear is a radical shift. While sources say he's not officially on suicide watch, he receives multiple visits from mental health staff each day, reflecting the stress and anxiety weighing heavily on him. 
These check-ins might provide a hint of comfort, but they also underscore the psychological toll such an environment inflicts. Imagine going from hosting lavish, star-studded events to spending every day in a cramped cell, stripped of autonomy and comfort. Prison consultant Larry Levine sheds light on Diddy's predicament. According to him, the conditions are bleak, reminiscent of a war zone with frequent lockdowns and violence. Diddy's new reality is a far cry from the glamorous life he once led. Survival now takes precedence over comfort. He's not playing chess, he's surviving, Levine asserts, highlighting the very real threats to his safety should he be placed in the general population. As more details emerge about Diddy's life behind bars, the complexities of his situation become painfully clear. His fame places him in a unique position. While it may offer some protection from certain dangers, it also exposes him to new ones. For every moment of privilege he might experience, there's a stark reminder that he is still subject to the relentless conditions of the MDC. Meanwhile, his family grapples with the fallout of his dramatic fall from grace. Diddy's children, once sheltered in a life of luxury and privilege, now face the painful reality of their father's situation. They navigate complex emotions, love, betrayal, and shame, as friends and family try to support them through this turbulent time. A cloud of uncertainty hangs over them, each day heavier than the last. For Diddy, the psychological impact of his incarceration is as profound as the physical limitations he endures. Spending nearly all day in his cell, he wrestles with feelings of helplessness and despair, compounded by the harsh environment around him. The thought of being separated from his children, unable to guide them through this crisis, weighs heavily on his heart. As his sense of identity fades, the life of luxury he once knew transforms into an existence marked by fear and uncertainty. In this isolation, Diddy's past life feels increasingly distant. He faces not just legal battles, but a fight for his mental well-being. As he contemplates the choices that led him to this point, the glitz and glamour he once enjoyed have vanished, replaced by a sobering truth. He is just another inmate in a facility notorious for its brutality. As the media tracks his every move, they feed a public fascinated by the downfall of a once untouchable star. Coverage of his case not only highlights the legal implications, but also sparks conversations about celebrity culture, how someone can plummet from the pinnacle of success to facing the abyss. As discussions surrounding the treatment of high-profile inmates gain traction, critical questions arise about the fairness of the system, the adequacy of mental health support, and the humanity of incarceration itself. Diddy's journey has the potential to shine a light on the broader issues within the American penal system, drawing attention to the need for reform. As he battles his own demons, his story highlights the struggles many face behind bars, often overshadowed by celebrity narratives. The stark contrast between his past and present serves as a reminder of the fragility of success and the complexity of human experiences. As Diddy finds himself grappling with this unprecedented chapter of his life, the emotional toll of his circumstances ripples through his family and close circle. The once unbreakable bond with his children is tested as they navigate their own feelings of fear and confusion. They had always known their father as a figure of strength and success, but now they are confronted with a starkly different reality. With whispers of scandal and headlines that expose their father's fall from grace, they must confront the emotional turmoil that comes with his incarceration. Friends who once shared in the luxury of his lifestyle are now standing on the sidelines, offering support while grappling with their own reactions to his downfall. Some are questioning their loyalties. Others are simply trying to make sense of a world that feels increasingly unpredictable. The conversations among them shift from celebrating Diddy's past achievements to lamenting the choices that led him here creating an atmosphere filled with tension and uncertainty. Diddy's days inside the Metropolitan Detention Center are punctuated by fleeting moments of connection, brief conversations with fellow inmates, sporadic visits from his legal team, and the daily check-ins from mental health staff. Each interaction serves as a stark reminder of his isolation, reinforcing the distance between him and the life he once led. 
As he sits alone in his cell, he reflects on the dreams that now seem so far away, questioning how he will rebuild himself if he ever gets the chance. Outside the prison walls, the media frenzy continues, capturing every twist and turn of his legal battles. Public fascination is relentless, with commentary ranging from sympathy to schadenfreude. For many, Diddy has become a cautionary tale, a symbol of the dangers of fame and excess. The contrast between the glamorous life he portrayed and the harsh reality of his situation becomes a focal point in discussions about celebrity culture, accountability, and the fragility of success. Amidst the chaos, Diddy is forced to reckon with the choices that brought him to this moment. The pressure of being a public figure weighs heavily on his mind, as he contemplates not only his future, but also the legacy he will leave behind. Will he be remembered as the hip-hop mogul who conquered the industry, or as a cautionary example of what happens when the glitter fades and the spotlight dims? His legal team works tirelessly to mount a defense, exploring every angle to challenge the charges against him. Each court appearance is fraught with tension, a reminder of the stakes involved. As Diddy listens to the proceedings, he feels the weight of his situation pressing down on him, a palpable mix of fear, regret, and the flicker of hope that maybe, just maybe, he can find a way out of this nightmare. In the stillness of his cell, Diddy begins to channel his turmoil into introspection. The confinement that once felt suffocating becomes a space for reflection. He starts to consider his past, the moments of joy, and the mistakes that led him here. With each passing day, he learns to confront the fears that lurk in the shadows of his mind, wrestling with the implications of his choices and the impact they have on those he loves. While the physical walls of the Metropolitan Detention Center feel impenetrable, the journey within becomes one of resilience. Diddy realizes that this experience, however painful, could offer an opportunity for redemption and growth. As he navigates the complexities of prison life, he begins to forge a new understanding of himself, one that goes beyond the glitz and glamour of his former life. The road ahead is fraught with uncertainty, but Diddy's story is far from over. He may be behind bars, but the fight for his freedom and for his legacy continues. In a world that now feels so alien, he is slowly discovering that true strength lies not in the wealth he once possessed, but in the capacity to confront his demons and redefine what success means in the face of adversity. The question remains, will he emerge from this experience transformed, ready to reclaim his life, or will the weight of his choices continue to shadow him as he navigates the challenges ahead? As the narrative unfolds, Diddy's journey serves as a powerful reminder of the complexities of human experience, how even the most celebrated figures can find themselves ensnared in a web of their own making, and how the journey to redemption often requires confronting the most uncomfortable truths. In this tumultuous chapter, Diddy is confronted not just with a fight for his freedom, but a chance to confront his legacy. Will he emerge transformed from this dark chapter? Or will the weight of his choices crush the very essence of who he is? The answer lies not just in the courtroom, but within the heart of a man who once commanded the world's attention, and now must face the consequences of his actions behind the cold, unyielding walls of the Metropolitan Detention Center. As he navigates these troubling waters, one thing is clear. The journey from a lavish lifestyle to the stark reality of prison life is a harsh reminder that no one is above the law. For Diddy, the MDC serves as a sobering backdrop to the next chapter of his life, encapsulating the struggles of a man caught in a relentless whirlwind of his own making.